So yeah, good morning guys. My name is Tina Llorca and I will be sharing with you some of uh, my stories, background, paano ako napunta sa Sun Life, what do I do currently, nang saan ako galing. So I entitled the talk, Five Bold Strokes. So uh, kung napanood niyo yung movie na The Half of It, movie nga ba yun, series? Anyway, Netflix movie na The Half of It, isa to dun sa uh, remarkable quotable quotes na ginamit nila. So, ang sabi niya kasi is, the difference between a good painting and a great painting is typically five strokes. And they're usually the five boldest strokes in the painting. So, meaning, yung mga magaganda daw na painting na nakikita natin, uh, nag-stand out sila just because of that five bold strokes. Sometimes we are afraid to, to take or to add that five strokes. Minsan kasi iniisip natin, baka yung maganda na, magandang painting na, mga pumangad pa, why take the risk? Not knowing that that five strokes, yun yung magpapaganda, magpapaspecial dun sa painting natin. So how would we know if we're not willing to take the risk? So, yun. Uh, bigyan ko kayo ng konting background ko before uh, ako napunta sa Sun Life bago ako naging uh, public practice uh, CPA. So before, ayan yung itsura ko, before ako umalis ng Deloitte, uh, I'm a 25-year-old uh, in the fir- uh, as a person holding a managerial position in the firm, uh, number one auditing firm globally. I should always mention that. Pride ng company namin yun. Uh, with 15 to 20 companies in my portfolio. So before kasi, syempre, yeah, assign kasi different companies. Uh, and in that uh, portfolios, I'll be holding 10 to 50 staffs. Kasi marami siya eh. So, and I'll be answering to 5 to 10 bosses. Kasi iba-iba siya. Iba yung uh, director, iba yung senior manager, iba yung uh, partner ni yung pinakamataas namin before. So technically, uh, I I go to different clients, meet a lot of people, handle a lot of people, and answer to a lot of people at that time. And I actually enjoyed that. So at that time, I was uh, handling a lot of clients, the name of you, Sutherland, PNG, etc. So yun yung mga clients na hawak ng Deloitte. Uh, and yung mga exciting dyan, yung BE, yan yung first um, aerospace company in the Philippines. Hindi sa aerospace, gumagawa siya ng interiors ng aeroplano. So, hindi siya bumubuo ng airplane. Pero dito ginagawa yung mga interiors. So, like, yung laboratories, yung um, ano pa ba, ba? Yung ovens, yung galleys, kung saan nilalagay yung mga gamit ng mga flight attendants. So, sila gumagawa nun. So, sobrang galing. Financial Times, as we know yung, yung news, uh, Sun Life at once, naging part din ako ng team nun. Before ako maging advisor ng Sun Life, syempre. PNG, of course, one of the biggest clients we have. Tapos yung Keppel Shipyard, ayan, gumagawa sila ng barko. So, exciting. Kasi lahat ng industries na yan, mapupuntahan mo, mapupuntahan mo yung planta nila. Ang saya. Masaya. Um, yan, we been to inventory counts. Makikita mo kung ano yung mga products ng, ng Century, ng PNG, kung paano sila ginagawa. Yung barko, mapapasok mo yung loob. Yung uh, mga interiors ng airplanes, makikita mo kung paano siya ginagawa. So, sobrang saya. Plus, I had a lot of fun. Siyempre, lagi rin kami kumakain. Kaya nakakatapa din actually sa audit. So, my stint in audit is short, pero super saya. I actually enjoyed it. And while I'm at the firm, I actually felt uh, four things. So, I feel kind of superior at that um, at that level um, as an auditor. Kasi, uh, ikaw yung magre-report sa client. Minsan, tuturuan mo yung ang kausap mo, CEO, CFO, President. Didiscuss mo yung issues na nanote nyo. So, ganun. Uh, you can also uh, talk to regulators sa pagka may nakita kang issue in some sort. 
Tapos, syempre, security. Monthly paycheck is regularly. Pwede ako mag-take ng leaves, paid leaves. Pagka may bagyo, tapos in-announce na um, walang pasok, may bayad pa din. Yung mga ganun. So, ngayon, like, for example, pandemic. Even if some of them uh, walang work, I presume may bayad pa din yun. And I felt needed. Kasi, syempre, uh, ginagawa ko ng maayos yung trabaho ko. Feeling ko magaling ako sa ginagawa ko. And therefore, people would would ask for me. Um, they would want me to handle their accounts. Clients normally call for personal issues, personal concerns, uh, other than the audit that we do. Nung may tanong sila about sa SEC, BIR, tatanin ka nila. So, I, I feel needed. And at that time, I'm really contented. Sabi ko nga, uh, masaya talaga ako dun sa ginagawa ko. Masaya ako sa audit. And what what changed? Uh, little by little, syempre I'm exposed to other other businesses like Sun Life. It's a wider arena than to be in an accounting services. Why? Kasi syempre sa accounting, ang makakausap mo lahat accountants lang, clients mo, accountant din. Uh, ang benchmark mo ng success is normally yung promotion. So, uh, pero on the other end, kapag medyo na-expose ka into wider arena, at syempre lumalaki yung perspective mo, lumalawak. Tapos, yung threshold mo, tumataas din. Uh, contentment level, may isip mo, contented ka na nga ba talaga or you want more? So, and also, if I'm going to be really honest, uh, kapag hinimay-himay ko, pag din down ko, hindi naman talaga ako superior dun sa work eh. Why? Because the luxury of saying no does not rest on me. Sunday, bigla kang pinapasok. I can say no. Gusto ko magbakasyon. I have my friends normally going out um, of the country or going out of town for, for summer vacation. I cannot join them. Diba? I can say no to them kasi hindi ako papayagan mag eh. So, I cannot say no na hindi ako papasok at a specific day. Lalo na kung may kailangan ng client. And it normally happens na nabuko na yung Boracay. Kaya nga, ilang beses ako nakapagbuk ng Boracay dati. Three times, never ko siya napuntan. Never. <laughs> Kahit May mo na binuk. Kasi supposed to be April tapos na yung busy season eh. Pero, kadalasan, hahabol at hahabol siya ng day. So, hindi pala ako yung superior. And next is yung security. Uh, yes, paycheck comes 15.30. Minsan may bawas dahil may late. Wala na kami ng OT kasi pag manager wala ng OT. So, you think of security at the expense, expense of what? And in reality, it's actually unknown. So, kaya nga you find a pill of security. Kasi a regular paycheck eh. 15.30 may darating. Pero, at that moment, I really didn't know at what expense am I receiving that 15.30 salary. And later on, of course, I was able to find out. So, my may discuss ko. So, needed. I was wrong to say that I was needed. I was actually wanted. Of course, if you are an employee doing your job, doing your best, they would want to. Who wouldn't want an employee excelling? Who wouldn't want employee performing? Of course, your boss will want that. Everybody else in the organization would want that. But it is really wrong to think that you are irreplaceable because everyone is replaceable. So you are not needed. You are wanted. And sobrang laki ng difference nun uh, pag naisip mo siya. Lahat, pati yung uh, how you act on the company. Misan kasi, I actually started working in a call center company. And most of my teammates, including me actually, matatapang kami, to be honest. Kasi feeling namin, ah, kabisado namin to, kailangan nyo kami, um, Mahihirapan kayo pag nawala kami. Matatapak talaga kami. Palagi kaming nag-ano dati. I remember uh, na lagi kaming nag, nagbabanta 
De, sige, magre-resign na lang kami pag hindi nabibigay yung mga gusto. And even in audit, normal yan, normal action. Bata na hirapan, new hire, uh, senior na hirapan. Magre-resign na ako. Uh, hindi para ano ah, parang ang sinasabi, ang tono nun is, bahala kayo pag nawala ako, may hirapan kayo. Well, thing is, slightly may hirapan, yes. Kasi syempre, kabisado mo na yun ulit. It will take time to transfer the knowledge. Pero to think na hindi mag-move forward yung organization without you. That's bull. That's BS. So, uh, you have to accept that everyone is replaceable. So, I don't know if you're... I'm watching too much Netflix now. So, kakatapos ko lang manood ng Last Dance no, kay Michael Jordan. Even... Si Pippen, di ba siya yung number two NBA player at that time, thought he was irreplaceable. Then later on, uh, nagka-injury siya, nag-step up yung other players, and the team is actually doing good kahit wala siya. It, of course, it takes some adjustment, but eventually, they were able to pick up their pace. Tapos naisip niya, replaceable din pala siya. And the attitude significantly uh, improved. Nag-iba yung, yung approach niya, of course. So, yun. Um, last is contented. I don't know if I'm really contented though. Kapag etong mga to, syempre yung una yun yung feeling mo. Pero if you dip, dig deeper, dig, dig deeper, I'm asking myself, am I really contented if I have wild dreams left unfulfilled? Yung mga dreams ko niyan, nagre-rent kami niyan for the longest time. I really want to have a house of our own. Kasi bata pa lang kami, nag-uupa na kami. 26 years. We never had our own home. We transfer like 10, 15 times. And yung mga bahay na yun, like, sobrang liliit. As in, yun lalaki namin. So, like, 20 square meter, 30. So, may 20. Basta maliliit. Tapos pa. So, I have I had those dreams. And I was working four years in the firm. I could never afford even getting a larger apartment for us. So, we're renting around 3700 per month flat. Um, it's too small. Not in a good place. Pero wala pa rin kaming choice kasi yung salary, hindi siya kakayanin. So, that left me thinking, X is pala lahat yung feeling ko. That I had to look for more because it cannot end like this. So, yun nga, ang question ko sa sarili ko eh, is there more to life than this? Me sitting in a desk, uh, in front of my computer, 12 hours, 14 hours, missing 24 hours a daily pag deadline. Um, because aside from the, the the interesting facts na napupunta kami ng mga inventory accounts and all, uh, that accounts for like 5% of the job. 95% is us sitting in the desk in front of our Excel trying to figure how the accounting system of the companies works. If there are loopholes, if meron bang mga mali, may kailangan i-adjust. That's 95% of our work actually. So, medyo nakakasawa. Saka nakakapangit. <laughs> so, yun. And sabi ko nga kanina, uh, if in your an office arena, normally our benchmark is when sino na-promote, gano'n kabilis, Oh, ang galing nito, two years pa lang, three years pa lang, manager na. Oh, ang galing nito, um, ang, taas, ang, ang taas ng ratings niya. Nandun yung mundo eh. So, yun lang yung benchmark mo. Oh, ang galing nito, naka-abroad. Ang laki daw yung sweldo niya. Pero if, if you are in a field where people really, really ex- excel, may isip mo, shit, sorry for the word. Ang layo pa pala. Ang layo ko pala sa kanila. But the thing is, even if um, I'm saying na ang layo ko sa kanila, masasabi mo rin, possible pala. Even in a short time. 
So, syempre, first, in, first inspiration si JB Badile naman na hindi mo na kailangan introduce. By, by the name itself, kilala ng lahat ng Sun Lifer yan. Una ko siya narinig sa talk niya sa BGT. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, uh, review or revisit of revisit training. So, nag-share siya doon. Sobrang amazed. Ang galing na itong, na itong lalaki na to. Tapos, na, na-surprise ako na ka-branch ko pala siya. So, at a young age, uh, grabe mag-earnings, grabe yung achievement. Number one sa lahat ng bagay. Youngest, youngest promoted branch manager, shoppers, and so on. So, grabe. Grabe rin yung inspiration ng story. If, if you don't know him, manood kayo ng MMK. So, na-feature yung buhay niya doon. So, just, just look for him. So, isa siya sa inspiration kasi nga, as a young millennial, ka-age ko yan actually, ka-batch ko yan actually. So, literally, uh, I have a colleague na katapat ko ng upuan dati, ka-klase niya, sa FEU. Best friend pala niya. So, yun. Uh, kaya yung paghanga, respeto, uh, kay JB Badile, sobrang taas. And may mga bagay siya na na-achieve na, of course, gustong-gusto ko rin na ma-achieve. And most of it, same reason as he is, as, as he have, para, para sa family. So, yung next photo naman, it's Don Soriano. Narinig ko siya nung nasa kalagitnaan ako ng decision whether I should push uh, to being a freelancer full-time or to um, stay in the company where I got recently promoted lang. Na wala pang ilang ilang buwan. Two months, three months pa lang. So, si Don Soriano is top seven sa board exam. CPA din siya. Kaya sobrang nakalidate ako. Grabe yung sharing niya. Galing din siya ng, ng auditing firm, sa bata pa. Tapos, grabe yung success. Grabe yung success. Of course, uh, in sign life, kilalang kilalang na si Don Soriano. So, yung skill niya na uh, sun life, yung nag yung nag-fuel, yung nag-abono, yung nag-capital ng lahat ng meron siya, it really struck me. So, sabi ko, ba, I'm in a good platform. Really. So, yung last is, of course, mga exposed individuals. So, ako kasi fan ako ng, ng wider perspective. Eh. And yung mga tao na binibring sa branches, ni Sun Life, ng team, to really expose us as a person kung ano yung wider arena na meron. Grabe yung tulong niya. Like, for example, si Sir John Merida, sobrang galing. Um, ang dami kong natutunan sa kanya. As in, grabe, on point lahat ng 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 na ideologies niya, ng teachings niya. Uh, yan. Si Coach Russ Huso naman, personal development, paano makikilala ng maganda yung sarili mo. Uh, Randall Chongson, uh, behavioral finance, more on behavior ng mga tao over things. Uh, of course, technical guy, Marvin Hermo, paano sa stocks, stock market, fundamentals, ano yung mga technicals niyan. Uh, so, Rex Mendoza, sobrang galing na finance guy also, o one of the financial guru na meron tayo sa sa industry. Tapos, of course, Francis Kong. So, silang lahat combined into one sa si Francis Kong. And many others. Grabe yung, yung, yung investment kasi ng company sa learning. So, yung exposure ko dito really widen the perspective and the belief na maraming pwedeng makuha in different fields. So, that's the reason why I decided that I'm going to elevate my painting by adding my five boldest strokes. So yun. And my first stroke is embracing the me and the I am not. So, syempre mag-uumpisa ka dun sa... Ako kasi nag-uumpisa ako in checking, di ba parang nung elementary ka, ang tinatanong is what is the problem, what is the given, 
ba? Diba? Tapos, solve the problem, tapos conclusion. Parang ganon. So, sa akin, ganun din. Ano ba yung meron ako ngayon? What's given? Kasi yung problem nga, alam na natin eh, I wanted to be more successful, provide for my family, have our house, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, what is given, given is kung ano yung meron na sa akin. Embracing the me and the I am not. So, who am I as a person talaga? So, my personal belief as a person is that number one, I'm a speaker. Sorry kung hindi ko masyado papatunayin sa inyo yun ngayon ha. Pero, personally, I truly believe I'm a speaker. If I wanted to, to be heard, I know how to stand out. My voice can be heard. If I don't want to be heard, I can shut up. You won't hear my voice. If somebody else is speaking and ayoko na ma-highlight siya, I can also do that. Kung baga parang medyo basta yan. I'm a speaker. By heart and by act. And number two, I'm actually fascinated with people. Pero I'm, a, an, I'm an observant. So one of my strengths dati nung may, may exam kami nun eh, high school, college, lagi yun, yung spatial, spatial, hindi special lang. Ibig sabihin ng special strength is um, I'm a good observer and I can easily detect changes in a certain circumstances, people, how they react, etc., etc. So yan. I'm always fascinated with people, although mas gusto ko na nag-observe from afar. Ayoko ng masyadong interaction, actually. Lalo na ng mga personal stuff. Number three, laki sa hirap, syempre madiskarte tayo. Ano ibig sabihin ng madiskarte? Basta ba diskarte ako? Kaya kong diskartehan yung mga maliliit na bagay, kaya kong maging artistic, kaya kong maging creative. Um, pag binigyan ako ng isang situation, kaya ko siyang maniobrahin. Uh, because we are trained to be like that. We grew up in a poor family para makagawa ka ng project, didiskartehan mo. Para magkabaong ka, didiskartehan mo. So, yun yung usong word sa amin. Dahil laking Manila yung papa ko, diskartehan mo na. Yun yung laging na sinasabi. And then lastly, I'm good in numbers. So, if, if most of you are ayaw nyo ng math, well, favorite subject ko dati na. Ngayon ako sa English. Kasi feeling ko pag maganda pakinggan, tama na yon Dahil dati nagkakating ako. <laughs> Sorry na po, teachers. <laughs> so, sabi ko nga, if I embrace the what I am, I should also check what are my I am not. So, number one, problema ko yung hindi ako competitive. Hmm, problema ba? Hindi. Parang by nature, hindi ako competitive. Mahilig ako na go with the flow, with the environment. Ang lagi ko lang rule, even kahit saan, elementary, high school, college, basta hindi lang ako, nam- hindi lang ako nasa dulo. Basta wala lang ako sa laylayan ng lipunan. So, okay na sa akin yung nasa gitna. Kung tumaas-taas pa, okay lang din sa akin. Pero never akong masyado nag aim na dapat ako yung nasa pinakamataas, ganyan-ganyan. Do, so, do ang nangyayari, kapag yung environment ko magagaling, medyo gumagaling din ako. Kasi nga ayoko nung nasa dulo eh. So, ganun lang siya. So, para ma-bring out mo yung uh, galing sa akin, you have to put, you have to have to put me in an environment na magagaling lahat. Kasi hindi ako magpapahuli. Although, hindi rin ako makikipagkompetensya to be number one. So, sometimes, it's 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 not a good thing. Kasi nga, like, ilan-ilan lang yung mga number of successful people. And most of them, not all naman, are really competitive on their field. So, minsan, I, I take that as a disadvantage. Pero, what can we do? It's not hardwired on me. But since I take notice of that, I'm willing to take action para hindi niya ako mahila pa baba. And number two, I'm really not a safe person. Why? Kasi, uh, never ako ng honest feedback eh. Pag ayoko, ayoko. 
pag feeling ko hindi mo kailangan, hindi mo kailangan. So, ang legitimo kasi, ang lihiti mo kasi yung salesperson. Narinig ko to sa one one of my friend na sobrang galing talaga sa sales. Wala siya sa sunlight. Sabi niya sa akin, Tina, alam mo sobrang galing kong salesperson. Kahit yung inuupuan mo, kaya kong ibenta sa'yo. Yung papel, kaya kong ibenta sa'yo. Yung upuan, lahat kaya kong ibenta sa'yo. Yun ang totoong salesperson. Nung sinabi niya, sabi ko, Shops, hindi ako salesperson talaga. Kasi if, if hindi ko siya kayang isold out sa sarili ko, na maganda yan, hindi ko siya mabibenta sa iyo. So, yun. Uh, number three, I don't push for boundaries. Na, uh, in a sense, na parang mediocre type. So, parang okay na kasi ako sa chill lang. Kung ano yung may bigay, di laban lang. Parang ganun. So, kung ano yung, yung pwede, kung ano yung available, hindi na ako para mag-deeper na, hindi, pwede naman yung ganito, yung ganyan, ganyan. So long as okay naman yung result, eh di okay na yan. Kasi nga, hindi nga ako competitive. So, I won't really push for boundaries. And lastly, wala akong network. So, if I'm going to be on a sales career, walang network, hindi ka salesperson, wala pa ano na. <laughs> so, since meron ako mga I am not, Meron ako mga IMs. I just have to make it work if I wanted to do something different. Right? Kasi, edi kung gusto mo, didong ka na lang sa dati. Mag-employee ka na lang. Para hindi ka mahirapan. Yun yung sinasabi ko sa sarili ko. Pero dahil I, I really wanted to, to expand, grow as an individual, I take this I am not and try to compensate it with ano yung meron ako, kung ano yung mga IMs ko na. So, sabi ko, you don't have to be, to compete. You just have to be better you each day. Just make yourself better every day. And that's good enough for me. Because the only person I am to check on is me. What did I do yesterday? I have to beat that. And every day, I, do, I should strive to get better. So, yun yung goal. I'm not a salesperson. So what? No one is telling you to sell. But look, if you have a good product in mind, you tried it. It's really good. You have friends that you want would benefit from it. Wouldn't you share? Pag may pagkain ka nga na gustong gusto, kasi alam mo, foodie yung ka... Foodie? Patay ko to. <laughs> foodie lang po din yung kaibigan mo. Siyempre siya share mo, uy, alam mo ba, may nakita ako maganda doon, bla bla bla. Lalo na yung mga uh, kwentong buhay mo or decisions or products na binili mo, lalo na alam mo would impact you in the future. Who didn't you share? And that makes uh, my life in tan life a bit easier. Because I really believe on the product. Sabi ko nga, hindi mo ko mapapabenta ng bagay na hindi ako naniniwala. Kaya dati, sumali ako sa mga pyramiding. I have nothing against them. Sobrang ganda talaga ng structure ng marketing nila. So, actually, na naabuso lang siya dito sa atin. So, next is... Push for boundaries. So, sabi ko nga yung fascinated with people. Eh. Pero, sabi ko, di ba, hindi ako masyadong yung one-on-one interaction, nagpagkwentuhan and all. But, I have to use my fascination, my fascination with people and talent to speak, to want to interact. Kasi sayang naman eh. I, I, I truly believe that it's God's gift to me. And if I'm not going to use it, and it's going to be wasted. So, yun. And then lastly, um, no network. So, if you use my, if I use my math, I cannot do anything on my own. At some point, I needed someone else. I have to be connected. And for someone who graduated from a public school, who don't have that much of a connection. But if you really want to succeed in life, then you have to network. And Sunlight for me, it's a good 
field to connect with people. Kasi ang daming sa sun life na lang, iba-ibang profession. Lahat ng kailangan mo nandun na. May doctor, may nurse, may attorney. Diba? And also, dun sa mga magiging client mo afterwards. Kasi you get to really meet people here. And yun nga, sabi ko dito, kailangan mo na mag-network, hindi mo man, wala ka man yan ngayon, discartehan mo na lang. Kasi diba, one of my strength is being my discarte. So, that's how I decided, sabi ko, okay, I'll just keep this in mind, and then I can move forward. On to my second stroke. So, my second stroke, becoming unemployed. Yan! Maging unemployed na tayo. So, in other words, I'm now ready to take that risk of not receiving my regular paycheck. <sighs> so, I truly believe, of course, I'm not saying na masama mag employee If I say that, 90%, 90, 95%, time paid perhaps, are all employed, right? And being a freelance, doing your own business, it's not really for everyone. But it, it is for someone who wanted to take charge. For you to achieve, you must be out of a leash. And if you are employed, you are always at the mercy of your employer. Eight hours, your eight hours is not yours because it's paid. Sometimes it will extend 10, 12, 14, 16 hours, 24 hours. And then doing it for years, may isip mo, sa akin pa ba tong buhay ko na bilhin na din? So may ganun. And it depends really kung, kung paano yung, yung nature ng employment and all. But for me, uh, I wanted to take more control over my life. That's why I don't want to be employed anymore. And actually, if, if you experience being unemployed and being in charge, for me, uh, I don't think I'm ever going back to being employed again. Okay. So, at that time, I said I wanted more time for myself, for me to relax. I wanted to have the liberty to think, be creative, be in charge. And I want to take a pause or hustle at my own pace. And I cannot do that if I'm paid to hustle, hustle, hustle. So yun. Third stroke. Freelancing in sales. So, I already said I'm not a seller. But why go to sales? So, before I joined Fan Life, I read the book, it's Secrets of the Truly Rich. I forgot the seven. But of course, secret number six, I remember. Specifically, he said, I should learn how to sell. So, when I read this book, sobrang nipis, ang lalaki ng font, sobrang ganda ng content. Hindi ako mahilig magbasa, pero ito natapos ko in like one day ata. Kasi nga, malalaki yung font niya. Eh. Tsaka maganda yung pagkaka- of course, sulat yung Sir Bo Sanchez. Sobrang maganda to, guys. I recommend you read this. So, in his book, he told me I have to learn how to sell to be successful. And it's an accountant, new CPA. Tapos, sasabihan mo ng ganun. Tapos, hindi na lang ako ng CPA. Kasi, hindi pala ako yaman dito. Charing. Well, anyway, I think hard at namili ako ng anong mga paraan para matuto kong mag-sell. Uh, sabi ko nga at that time, I entered into a different MLMs. Kasi yun yung uso at that time. Nung 
then, nag-join ako pero hindi naman ako nakabenta kasi nga, hindi naman ako maputi. So, hindi ko mabenta yung mga capsules nila and yung mga sabons nila. And I truly believe, hindi ako fan ng product. Kasi nga, yung safe word, mabibili mo, magkano lang. Yung sa kanila, mahal. Mga ganun. So, nung naalala ko yung financial advisor ko, sabi ko, that's something I can do. So, when I joined Sun Life, nalaman ko na selling, it's not just a field where you sell a certain product. Grabe pala yung kailangan mong overhaul. Why? Because, um, uh, ano ba? When you are in sales, you're in, ikaw yung, ikaw yung, yung personality mo, yung, yung ikaw as a person, kailangan matatag mo na. Being the one, parang frontliner ka eh. Ikaw yung naghanap ng kliyente, ikaw yung magdidiscuss, ikaw yung matatanggihan. And at some point, pag maraming tumatanggi sa'yo, feeling mo wala kang kwentang tao at, at, at some sort. Kaya yung, yung maturity mo as a person, yung readiness ng heart mo to really give yourself to other people, it has to be level 9, 10. Kaya ang laki ng, ng respect ko sa mga batikang salesperson because it's really not easy. And you will definitely be out of your comfort zone most of the time. Because one way or the other, there will be dilemma and you will have to solve it and conquer it. And then, just when you thought you break your comfort zone, beyond it for one quarter, may isip mo, ay, hindi na yan, comfort zone ko na yan. I have to go to another danger zone. And then the danger zone will become your comfort zone once again. Then you'll find another danger zone. So you, you constantly upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And in sales, you will have to learn how to collaborate. You will know that to be successful, you have to be part of an ecosystem. And there is no one-man ecosystem. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? May isip mo, connected lahat ng tao, best. At babait ka sa sales. Hindi dahil plastic ka. But because you know, every people is important. Connected kayo lahat. Kung connected kayo lahat, hindi ka pwedeng salbay sa janitor. Hindi pwedeng mabait ka lang sa president. Because for all you know, that janitor is the closest friend of the president. So, yung mga pinakamagaling na salesperson normally are the kindest. The mga selfish person I know. At least in San Lai. And then last is you're going to expand. If you choose sale, you have to keep abreast of the changes, updates, modernizations, and improvement. There is a constant learn and unlearn cycle. Your knowledge is never enough and thus you will grow wanting to get to know more, be better, and be better, and be better every day. Because sometimes your sales dependent on what you know. And what you know at the moment pinabukasan, obsolete na agad. Then you have to learn a new thing. Like for example, ngayon, people are not used to using digital selling. But we have to learn it. Because if we won't, may extinct tayo. And since we are paid by every effort that we do, commission basis and all, kung wala kang benta as a salesperson, nga nga ka. Diba? So ito nga yung kumbaga Pwede kang zero kung wala ka talagang na-produce, pero pwede ka namang millions kapag nakuha mo yung certain client and all, certain number of clients. So, kaya nila sinasabi na in sales, you dictate your paycheck, which is really true. And you know what? When I, I got into business, because aside from Sunlife, I'm handling my firm. 
um, employees I have, I pay them at a certain regular amount every month, like 20, 30,000. But out of the 20, 30,000, of course, I'll be earning more. Because I'm the one betting. Meaning, I bet on giving you 20,000 consistently on a monthly basis because I am hoping and I'm working hard to get a client that will pay me millions. So that if I get the millions, I'll pay 20, 30, and pasok yun sa threshold. So what, my, what is my risk? Pag hindi ako nakakuha ng kliyente, I still have to pay you regularly. See, if you're an employee, you're not the one gambling. Other people are. Other people is. And those people gambling will earn more. So I just, I suggest for you guys, be in the position you can take the risk. Because if you don't have any capital, diba, you would always want to be an employee. Kasi hindi ka, wala kang liberty to take risk eh. Kasi nga wala kang pera eh. You would want to have regular paychecks on your behalf every month. But if you have an extra cash, you have the talent, you know you can get clients that would pay you times four, times five of the expected salary of your employees. Then by all means, go into business. Fourth stroke. Go beyond yourself. So sometimes, um, nung nasa firm ako or nag-earn ako ng five digits in a month, sakto naman na actually yun eh. Hindi naman na kami nagugutom. Sapat na, kumbaga. But if I stop there and did not go beyond me, because for me, okay na siya eh. Diba? I can sleep. Kaya ako mabuhay ng ganun lang. Pero I'll be selfish because I know I can do more and bless more people if I do more. So I have to go beyond myself. Create a massive impact to the people around you. So be the light that, that will tell most of the people around you, ah, pwede pala. Possible pala. Uy, ang galing niya. Gusto ka rin maging ganun. You will create opportunities for others. Because, kunyari, in my firm, I have employees. Dati yung mga employees ko na yun. Sa rin mga kakitmisa ng ating. <laughs> Sorry. Pero I created opportunity for them. I gave them office. I gave them work. I gave them salaries. Opportunities also for the, for the people under my team. I share to them how, how great the business is, how good the platform is. Diba? You can take advantage of it if you have the guts, if you have the courage, and if you have the will. And if you choose to be better, someone else will follow. Laging ganyan, mga kaibigan mo, kahit mga kaaway mo, pag nakita nila na naging okay ka, tendency is, dapat maging better din sila one way or the other. Kasi yung laging sasabihin niya, bakit naman si ano? Pero kung ikaw yung sa grupo nyo, ikaw yung ganun pa rin hanggang ngayon, tapos ikaw yung ginaya kasi ikaw yung nag influence sa lahat, bakit naman si ano, ano lang? Your choice. So, sa akin, um, one fulfillment that I have once I step out of, parang once I become an employee, unemployed, nantupad yung pangarap ko. And it was, it, it, it's not just one door, it's one, two, three, four, five doors. So I was able to build a four-story, uh, parang apartment style, build, building style, uh, duplex, whatever. 
wherein I was able to provide door for my father. Siya yung nasa baba. Ito yung, yung door niya yung yung basta. Yung nauuna. Then for me, I have my own second floor. And then third floor, yan. Yung sister ko kasi may family na siya. And then si mama. Hiwala siya ni papa. Pero under niya pa rin si papa. Kasi nasa taas siya. So, third floor siya. And then I have my own office at the top of the floor. Sa fourth floor. So, you know, the, the, and this happened in just a year of taking chance, taking that risk and being courageous enough to, to step out of my comfort zone before. And I, I'm really thankful that I took uh, that risk. So, yeah. And then fifth, and final stroke is hitting the metrics. So, sabi ko nga, I'm not competitive. But I, despite that, because in San life, you can actually earn say, 300,000 a year, 500,000 a year, 601 million a year per month. It's your choice. And if I'm really being honest with myself, I, I probably earn, say, 500,000 in a year. Kasi okay naman na yun eh. Maliit, pero okay na. But the thing is, I won't hit my metrics. And each time I have to decide what metrics should I hit? Why? Because I wanted to do my best in whatever I do. Ang pinahayo ko kasing feeling, yung regret. So, sabi ko nga, there's no better way to drain one's energy than be bombarded with mountain of regret. And I don't want to be in that position. So, I make sure that in every field, that I enter into, I just give my best. Kung saan siya aabutin. Para walang, kasi dapat ginawa ko to, sayang dapat. Sa accounting, meron kami tinatawag na sunk cost. Yung opportunity lost, pero hindi mo na pwedeng balikan. So it's a waste of time. Really think about it. And if I did not do my best the first time, hindi ko pwedeng sabihin na kasi hindi ko ginawa yung best ko dati kaya ganun lang yung naging result. Yun yung pinakaayaw ko na feeling. That which gets measured gets done. So I always uh, target a certain number. And if if I don't have any number, aim for nothing and you'll hit it every time. Lagi kang fulfilled. At least kung meron kang target, na-achieve mo, sobrang saya mo. Na, hindi mo na-achieve, malungkot ka. Pero you know, kung saan ka nagkulang, what to do better next time, paano mo siya i-correct. May evaluation ka. Kasi may ini-aim ka eh. So, aim for something. And try your best. Do your best to hit it. The metrics you hit is like your signature in a painting. Your final stroke. Make sure it is something you can be proud of. Kasi yun yung signature mo. And make sure people around you, when they see that signature, they know it's you. So, yeah, Five bold strokes. It's normally the difference between a good painting and a great painting. So, how are you going to paint your canvas? You decide. Are you going to just paint it as it is? Or you choose to put in your five boldest stroke? Thank you, Paul.